Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are back and we're ready to talk about the Ethereum merge. What is this? It's the biggest thing happening in crypto this year. Is it? Probably. So we're we'll going to be covering the Ethereum merge. What's happening exactly? This is an intro to the merge. We will not go deep into all the technical stuff, but we will cover the most relevant information that you need to know over the next two months leading up to the merge. So with no further ado, let's begin. All right, let's get started. So what is the merge? What do you need to know? The very basics, Ethereum is going from proof of work on the right left side to proof of stake so what does that mean let's get a quick rundown on what is proof of work and proof of stake proof of work um, miners kind of exchange mining capacity and it depends on computational power in other words you could say that mining is an exchange of electricity for uh crypto like ethereum or bitcoin so miners receive block rewards to solve a cryptographic puzzle and hackers would need to have a computer more powerful or as powerful than 51% of the network to add a malicious block leading to a 51% attack. So what does this mean? Essentially, the network is secured thanks to all the miners um, that are solving these cryptographic puzzles and those miners get rewarded. That means that they have the miners are exchanging electricity, but to solve the puzzles in order to keep the network safe. With proof of work, validating capacity depends on the stake in the network. What is, what is the stake in the network? Well, usually it's how much tokens of that network do you lock up in order to secure the network. Validators do not receive a block reward. Instead, they collect transaction fees as a reward. This is very different to proof of work because in proof of work, you can actually tip miners to get your transaction through earlier or faster. And same, similar to proof of work, a hacker would need to own 51% of all the cryptocurrency in the network, which is practically impossible and therefore making 51% attacks are impossible. This isn't exactly completely accurate. A hacker would only need to own 51% of the total staked um, assets in the network. So it's not 51% of all of the crypto in that network. It's 51% of all the staked crypto in that network. So that's kind of a quick correction there, just so you understand. Um, why is that impossible? Well, you would need billions of dollars worth of Ethereum right now to have a malicious attack on Ethereum. Um, and this is not currently an issue. However, moving forward in the following videos, we might dive into potential uh, scenarios where this could be a problem. Now, why is moving to proof of stake such a big deal? Well, number one, and maybe one of the biggest, easiest things to understand is that proof of work would actually make Ethereum ESG compliant. This means that anyone that was worried about the environment uh, would have no case anymore because essentially all of the electricity that is currently being used on ethereum would not be necessary anymore and ethereum would use almost 99 percent less energy to secure the network and to run the network so a lot of gamers a lot of artists that are concerned about the electric electric use of ethereum would have no case anymore with Ethereum going to proof of work. Now, this is a very big deal because a lot of institutional participants that want to partake in Ethereum um, aren't quite able to because they want to have Ethereum be ESG compliant and they don't like the bad side of Ethereum uh, of where it is not environmental. So the fact that Ethereum could potentially uh, be a good asset for them to have is a big deal. So that is the next step on Ethereum proof of stake. Now let's also talk about 
what is very important, and that is the merge. So what is the merge and what happens here? So with Ethereum, you got many stages and stage the stage that we're on now is the merge where the beacon chain on the left side, consensus layer, the beacon chain is the proof of stake chain. And then we have the proof of work chain. So these are gonna merge together and create one chain where the proof of work chain will go away and essentially deteriorate while the beacon chain or the proof of stake chain kind of adopts all of the proof of work chain and what was running on it. A metaphor that is often being used for this part of the merge is that of a car. So imagine you have a functioning car that is going down the highway at a consistent speed. And now you want to upgrade that car and you want to make that car electric. So the what you do is that you do not stop the car because there's a lot of people that are trying to get somewhere in that car. Or it could be a bus or whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people are taking that car and you cannot stop that car because if you stop it, everything stops and it could be a big issue. So what you do is you start designing um, an electric engine on the outside, maybe in a garage or whatever, and you design that perfect electric engine. But now for the merge, you have to come next to the car and that is what the beacon chain is doing. And as the car is moving, you're gonna take out the original combustion engine and replace it with the electric engine, the proof of stake network, as the car continues to move and doesn't stop. So why is it so complicated? Well, because the car cannot stop. You are replacing the engines of what is working underneath without the car stopping. Now, why is this car analogy so uh, relevant? Well, if the car can be, um, a visualization of the network and all the apps on top of it, the actual casing or the way the car looks does not change the same way that all the apps on top of Ethereum do not change. However, the underground, the machine that is running the car, that is changing and thus proof of stake will create Ethereum, um, big changes for Ethereum moving forward. Um, one of the most relevant changes as well is that there will be a triple Bitcoin happening. So if you know Bitcoin every four years, the emissions go down by half, and that's called the Bitcoin halving. Um, and that with Ethereum, what is happening with the merge over here is you're going to have the equivalent of a triple uh, halving. So... In this website, Ultrasound Money, we can actually revise what it would look like for the merge to happen right now. So as we know, Ethereum transaction fees get burnt, but Ethereum has a supply growth of almost 2% a year, even with the burns that are happening. And this is to pay out miners. However, with the merge going forward, this, these emissions can be cut as you're not paying miners a minimum amount all the time. So if we turn this on, Ethereum would effectively become deflationary by at 1.6% annual rate. And because of this, Ethereum becoming deflationary would be a huge deal because the actual total circulating supply of Ethereum would be going down. So what does this mean? A lot less Ethereum going forward and continuously every year there will be less Ethereum to go around. Uh, for anyone that loves uh, money and kind of supply shock situations, this is the best you can have. And that is why this website is called Ultrasound Money. If gold or Bitcoin is sound money, then Ethereum is ultrasound money with the merge. Uh, essentially, it becomes a deflationary token naturally by itself. So this was a quick breakdown of the merge. Another quick note from the merge is that block times are actually going to be reduced. So one of the biggest misconceptions with the merge is that Ethereum gas prices will go down. And even though they have been down recently, 21 GUE is quite low for Ethereum. Uh, the actual merge is not what is going to make Ethereum cheaper or faster, even though it is making Ethereum a little bit faster because block times are predefined and they will be a little faster than now. So Ethereum will become a little faster and a little cheaper, but be 
from going to proof of stake, but that is not the main uh, thing that is happening uh, with the merge. That it comes next in the next phases, as we can see here, we got the surge, the verge, and the purge, and the splurge. All of these are the next phases of the Ethereum scaling. And when do we get faster, cheaper Ethereum? Well, we are going to get that with sharding. And sharding will come either with the surge, with expansion, sharding, basic sharding. Um, all sharding essentially means that not the whole network needs to validate a block. You can get specific areas of the network to validate. Um, so sharding is going to make Ethereum a lot faster and a lot more efficient and cheaper. But you cannot get to sharding without the merge. So because of that, the merge is the most important step right now because it allows for all of this in the Ethereum roadmap to be developed and to come forward as it gets implemented. So that is why the merge is so very important. Now, finally, moving forward, let's wrap it all up. What happens next? Today and tomorrow, uh, August 4th through August 6th, will be the last testnet for the merge. If this testnet is successful, this is the Gorelli testnet, then the merge will be confirmed for September, probably mid-September. Now, the merge does not depend on block height. It will depend on difficulty. And this is a topic for a whole nother video because it, we're going to get deep into the weeds on uh, how the Ethereum merge will actually work, all the technicals around it, if that is what you want. So drop a comment in the videos if you want to learn exactly what is happening. For now, what you need to know is the merge is most likely scheduled for the middle of September. And the final testnet is happening this weekend. And if that is successful, it is green light and Ethereum we'll most likely see uh, some good days ahead. So if you guys have any question about this, drop them in the comments. You guys can also join the Discord, uh, the Burb Nest. We're happy to answer all your questions there. We've been helping everyone understand what is happening with the merge. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I'll get back to everyone moving forward. Thanks for coming out and joining us. Peace.